Today's video is made possible through the support of Avitech and dozens of other people just like you on Patreon. Check out the links below in the description to see how you can get involved, help support the videos, and get involved in the massive online community growing in our Discord. Thank you. Hi there guys, welcome back to the bench. Today on Kits with Chris, we're going to be building a clock. I've got this kit. It's a 6-bit electronic clock kit. Let's, let's check it out. Well, you know it's legit. They've got, they got a logo with a gear. That's how you know it's from a, a real maker organization. It's got a logo with a gear. This is actually pretty good. We've got, we've got a whole schematic happening here. That's ah, neat. There's a lot going on. We've got instructions. We've got a parts list. We got a whole thing. It doesn't at any point in here tell us who the hell made it. <laughs> there's there's nothing here telling who made it. But it runs on seven to twelve volts, six bits. Is it really six bits? Because I see that it's six digits. That doesn't mean it's six bits. A bit is a zero or a one, on or off, okay? The, the smallest unit of information. Something is on or off, true or false, yes or no, that's a bit. A byte is a letter, a number, of, you know, something like that. If, if you have to, to make one letter or number, you need a byte. And that's eight bits. So given that this has six digits each one of those takes a byte so we've got we got a big chip we got a little transistor just stuck in the foam we have a lot of the same resistor let's sort some things out we got our board here oh it's by eq kit do we have a number on here anywhere i like the board layout I really like the board layout. Resistors all in a row, transistors all in a row. That's that's a cool board layout. It's probably not the most efficient board layout, but it's aesthetically appealing. Look at that. Look at the the traces on there. I like that. That's cool. All right, we'll set that aside. We've got power feed. We've got a bunch of the same resistor. Two, one, and one. There's our power plug. So I'll set that over here. So two, three, four, five. There's a magnet. Hang on, look at this. Things are sticking to it. Is that a speaker? Like a real speaker? I thought it was just a little piezo buzzer it's got a magnet in it piezos don't have magnets 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 huh might be a legit speaker it's labeled tango mic bravo one two alpha zero five huh okay that's cool so we got a couple little caps i'm going to set those over here uh, switch yet more transistors so i got i got a transistor question this might take us a minute to figure out got a clock crystal at 12 megahertz four leds there and a bunch of small caps whoa hang on we have two power, oh, because one's straight and one's right angle. So we've got options on power plugs. Now the resistors we're gonna have to figure out. So let's, it's, it's the transistors that, that bug me though. Um, so let's look at those first, then we'll get into the little caps because the transistors, That is 
too goddamn small to read. All right, so what I'm going to do is line the transistors up and see if they're all the same, because that's that's my concern. Oh, I can see it down there. Five eight five five zero. Five eight five five zero. It's all about lighting. Five eight five five zero. D three three one. Okay. These are all the same. Uh, yep, yeah, that's the same. That's the same. Because there's a lot of different things that can look exactly the same as this. And the only way to tell is the numbers. Okay, those are all exactly the same. Now there's one here stuck into the thing. Now are you the same or are you different? Is you is or is you ain't? Now see that's very different. I can't read the damn thing. These are all the same so we can put those in a big pile up there. This one says WS, what is that? 78 Lima 05 November? That's what I'm shooting for. Let's see if we can find anything here on the list. Resistors, capacitors, capacitors, LEDs, Nixie tubes. These aren't Nixie tubes. Um, seven eight L O five. Seven eight L O five. That's the voltage regulator. Okay, so this is different. This is a voltage regulator. See, it looks like a transistor, but it's not. It's just in that kind of package. So that's a voltage regulator. And was that 78550? Or S8550. That's called an audion. What the fuck is an audion? I think it's a transistor, but they're calling it an audion. You can you can see Audion. Oh, what the fuck that is. All right, so we've got resistors. And we're going to have to figure out the values. So this is a game we can play together. First one is brown, black, red with a gold tolerance. Brown, black, red with a gold tolerance. I'm going to say these are 1K because brown, black, red, I think is 1K. So those are probably the 1Ks. And I'm going to get a Sharpie and make a note on those that says 1K. Okay, so those are 1Ks. I'll set those over here. Now these two are red, black, red with a gold or silver. I can't remember. Let's compare to that. I want to say that's gold. Red, black, red. Now I got two of these. Red, black, red. Two K. I think two K. <laughs> 
tell me if I'm wrong. I'm going to say 2K. Yeah, I'm going to say 2K. All right. And then we've got these two, which are green, black, red, and brown, black, orange. Green, black, red, and brown, black, orange. I'm going to have to look those up. I don't know enough off the top of my head. But we'll go to the audience. All right, guys. We got Brute Claw, James Luck, and Big Teddy in here. Hi. Good morning, gentlemen. What is, on the resistor color codes, we need green. That's like a maroon, but I'm going to say brown. Green, brown, red. What is that? And what is... Brown, black, orange. Now, does our board, our board gives us values for what goes where. So we've got that, which is cool. Yeah, the board looks pretty simple. Some weirdness with that resistor down there, but I think that R1, that 10K resistor, just stands on end. Yeah, everything on here looks like something I'm capable of. I've got to figure the resistors out, but everything else I've got. Sparky would know. Well, we know all the 1K resistors. So we can knock those out like nothing. So there's a lot I don't know, so we got to figure this out as we go along. And that can be kind of tricky. But that's, that's half the fun of this. I like learning stuff. Okay, we're fluxed. James, can you measure or can can you message Sparky in the Discord? Good morning, Mr. Cole. We're trying to figure out some color codes on things. Maybe you can help. Are you up on your resistor color codes? Oh, get in there. I didn't want to just push that over because I'd put a big kink in it, so I pulled it over. Yeah, 
the leads on these particular resistors are really thin. I'm taking my time today and doing this as perfectly as I can because I've had a, I, I've been doing the Tesla coil kits for the past few and they all suck and I really want to get a win on this one. I want to I want to have a successful build because if I don't it's going to crush my soul. I'm taking my time, checking everything, making sure I do it just so, because there's no point in rushing, not on this. I got all the time in the world. So we know these are 1Ks as well, except that one, that's a 5.1K. So that's gonna be one of those screwy color ones James asked, what was that color order? Give me just a second and I'll tell you. I'm going to stuff these resistors in first. And we definitely got the 1K right because I have exactly as many as I have spots for 1K resistors. Okay, there's all our 1K resistors, and 1K is brown, black, red. So the resistors that we don't know are brown, black, orange, which I th think, yeah, I'm not sure, um, and uh, green, black, red. So brown, black, orange, and green, black, red. We need to know what those two are. But for these, we can now solder all these in place. Which is good, because there's a hell of a lot of them. And we already fluxed those, so I'm gonna flux these.
I'm gonna double check and make sure everything's still sitting. Yeah, we got some stuff moving. Oh, we'll deal with those in a minute. First, I'm gonna get all the ones that I know are set. Grab my solder. having trouble seeing the forest through the trees here. Okay, and then I'm going to cut some leads out of the way so we can have some room to operate in here. Thought stuffing all those in in advance would be a good idea. It was not. Because there's so many things poking up on the board. It's hard to visualize things. up here and see how those look. Oh, I got those. Try that on the other side. Make sure everything's down. Oh, you're you're going wild. Okay, let's get on that one. Ooh, grody tip. This is not my best soldering today. That's looking better. That's way better. All right. Yeah, 
Yeah, we just had too much shit on the board at once. Okay, now we just gotta clean up these down here. We're all down. I wanna do a better job up there. Really not happy with how that corner is coming out there. It's looking like shit. And it's clumsy to get to. Let's see if we can clean it up, make it look better. Okay, that looks all right. Hi there, Mr. Rickenbach. How you doing, sir? got our resistors on that is that is bad that is way bad we got to clean that up now that we can get in there and see what we're doing I'm going to have to put a thing through the top there. I think that's that big chip. solder braid in here because I'm gonna need a hole there yeah it's for the chip thing and you need to come down all the way got a couple resistors that are a little migratory all right I'm gonna go a little out of sequence here because I want to get that that chip socket in there. Let's take a look at the chip socket. This is an Alpha Tango 89 Charlie 2051. And this thing goes that way. It wants to sit there. Slide down a little bit. Are we, are we in alignment? Okay, 
so I may have to Oh, that felt good. Yeah, that's down and flat and good. Okay. I'm going to bend this over just a little bit. Okay, so that'll lock that down. Okay, now we can solder that in place. Clean up some of the mess, but let's How's that look? That looks beautiful. That's what I want. That's that's what I'm going for. Now let's see if we can do the other side just as well. Now, how's that look now? Is that acceptable? You good with that? I think it's all right. We look good on top. We look good on bottom. That one's a little long and I'd like to clean it up. Yeah, I can live with that. All right, we're back on track. It's gonna be okay. All right, so we had an answer on our resistor color code. It looks like brown, rat, brown, black, red is 10K. Other should be 5K. So we've got, that's brown, black, orange, not brown, black, red. And then we've got green, black, red. So that's our color code we're trying to figure out. Can anybody take a shot at it? We've got two unidentified resistors, brown, black, orange with a gold tolerance and green, green, brown, red. Yeah, green, brown, red with a gold tolerance. Green, oh, Sparky's here, we're okay. It's, we've got adult supervision. It's gonna be okay, we've got Sparky. Green, brown, red is 5.1K, and brown, black, orange is 10K. So, green, brown, red is 5.1K. Let's figure out where the hell we're supposed to stick that. Green, brown, red, 5.1K. So, green, brown, red is 5.1K. So says the Oracle of Wales. And if Sparky says it, I believe it, and that settles it. He almost never steers me wrong. So that's that one. 
and the other one was 10K. So 10K is brown, black, orange is 10K. And that one we got to put in on a jaunty angle. So we're just going to wrap it around like this. You can do this with resistors. And if the resistor looks like it goes through a hole like this and the holes are that close together, I got to think that's what they want you to do. So that's our 10K. <coughs> Flux the fucking hole. Okay, we're going here first. Beautiful. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Oh, it's so much easier when when they're spread out like that and I don't have 10,000 things to fight on the board. Okay. All right, Sparky, we got those. Now let's verify. I have red, black, red with a, I think that's a gold tolerance. It might be a silver. So I have red, black, red. And I think that's 2K. Is that 2K? What say you, Sparky? Also, where the hell do they go? Oh, there they go. That's got to be 2K. That's all I got left. I say they're 2K. Because those are the only resistors I have left. And the spots on the board say 2K. So red, black, red, 2K. Yep, cool, Sparky confirms it. Flip them over. There we go. A little flux. Okay, we got that. That's starting to look like something. Look at that, there's a lot of resistors on there. All right, now things should start getting a little easier and hopefully going a little faster. I wanna do, I wanna not have chunks of metal stuck in my finger. All right, so we got all those Q5, they're not in order, 7316425. Okay, but those are all the 8550s. And we know we have a ton of these little transistor dingoses. And they put these all in a row. So we're going to do them all in a row. But we're going to do them one at a time. 
Okay, so now we're on to the transistor phase of things, and transistors are thermally sensitive, so you don't want to rush these. You want to take your time, and you want to give each wire a little bit of time to cool before you jump right into the next one. So we're just going just gonna to take it easy and marathon pace this, because we got a lot of them to do, so we're just going to slowly work our way right across. We're going to do this one first. Probably be better if I flux those, wouldn't it? flux the whole row. How long is flux good for after you apply it? Like, can I flux a whole board before I start? Or should I only flux a couple of heads? Okay, so that transistor is done. We got a lot of these to do. I like that idea. Brute Claw says typically what I do, especially for LEDs, is solder one leg on each, then go back to the beginning and solder the next leg. That's a good idea. I don't want to have to fight. Well, I don't know. These are all in single file. So... Maybe I can do that on these. Where we go and we solder one leg, then the next, then the next on, on each and do them all individually. Yeah, I could do that because they're all they're all in single file. So we could probably do this. That go a lot faster. And while I certainly don't try to dawdle when I do these videos, the electronics videos are a much slower pace. The, the whole Kits or Chris thing is designed to be pretty chill. So I'm, I'm certainly not rushing my way through this. I've got a soldering video coming up, one of the Kits or Chris, where it's going to be a speed run, but that's a totally different groove. It's a lot of transistors. And I'm leaving these up quite a ways off the board to aid in just cooling and how they want to be mounted. Okay, so we're going to go and uh, do these one leg at a time. I'm going to cut those first three legs off because there's no sense leaving them there. They're just in our way at this point. So we're going to do all of leg number one all the way across, then two all the way across, then three all the way across. And just, just do these by the numbers, nice and slow, carefully. OK, 
because we want to give them time in between to cool. Now we go back here and we get two. And I'm going to come along and trim those leads. Oh, that, that didn't really work very well. <laughs> like, I do it, but it's going to be a pain in the ass. Okay, oh, I skipped one. Okay, does that look good to you? Looks like I got them all. Ah, a little bridging on the one there. We'll clean that up here in a second. Okay, yeah, we got a little bridge there. That looks nice and clean. Yeah. I think we're good there. I think those are all right. Okay. What are we gonna tackle next? How about tiny capacitors, of which I have a few. Let's get a look at them first. Have 104, 30, One oh four, and thirty. So I got two thirties and two one oh fours. I never see these in any other sizes. All right. Well, those should be easy to differentiate. Now we just got to find out where they go. C three and C two are our thirties. So. That's down here in the corner. Flux that. Okay, those are restrained well.
Okay. So that's two of our little caps. Where do the other ones go? C4 and C5. Okay, so we're going to pop out of here and we're going to do all that upper stuff. We got, we got a lot of stuff up here. C4 and C5. That power regulator goes up in there. So we'll just, we'll just do that whole quadrant right now. And we can see that C4 has a 104 next to it, so we know we're right there. And then there's this 104. So next we have the 100 microfarad cap and the 10 microfarad cap. That's the big one. I'm going to say that's 100. 100 mics! Polarized. This is an electrolytic capacitor. So these are polarized. You can see the big minus sign there. So we put that over here. There's our minus. We can see the little plus on the board, so we know we're cool. Flip it over. We'll flux that. That one's good. Okay, so the other one's a 10 mic. Goes right there, we'll flux it. Flip it. See our polarity. Beautiful. I'm starting to learn the feel 
of soldering. Like I'm just starting to get it, but I can, I can feel when it's good. Like when it just flows right, I can, I can feel it. All right, we're gonna get back up in this corner and do the U2 thing. Because it says 78L05. And if we look here, we can see 78L05. So this, I'm guessing, is a voltage regulator. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's a voltage regulator. And I say that because the number is different. It's a 78 series, which seems to be a thing for voltage regulators. And it's up here with capacitors and power source. So this is all probably voltage regulation and ripple control and all that jazz. That's that's what I'm that's the feeling I get. Clean that up a little bit. Oh, that's just how it's trimmed. Okay, and then we'll go over to this side. And we'll just wait a moment. And then we'll do the middle one. How's that look? Look good? It's good to me. Clean those off. All right, so we're good there. I'm gonna come back and do the, no, I'm, I'm gonna do this now before I do that, actually. And we're gonna put, there's, there's two sets of pins of, of power plugs. One is straight and one is right angle. We're gonna do right angle in case I wanna put this in a box someday. So that's gonna to wanna to sit Mm -hmm. So that's going to want to sit like that, is how it'll look, which is pretty cool. And the 78L05 is a 5 volt linear regulator. I don't know what a linear regulator means, but I get that it's a five volt regulator. These pins are kind of chunky. I like them. All right. Oh, wait, there's two connector points. There's two. All right. Well, I'm glad I put, I didn't notice that until just now. And I'm glad I put the other one there because I'd have been really, really sad because it's obvious that goes there. So let's do this one as well. I do a little bit of yoga here because this one wants to fall out. So to recap, we have two power connector points. Now I don't know why we have two power connector points. Is this just for options? Because this one's got a plus and minus label on it. This one doesn't. It just says J1. But it's clear that that's what goes there. Ah, 
But we're gonna move our board down a little bit. Work on this side. So we've got our buzzer, three switches, and a crystal. Let's do the crystal first. Just because that's the smallest, closest to the board, fussiest little thing. And I'm going to flux for the switches now. And then for the buzzer. We are sneaking up close on being done with this. And continuing our theme of neatness, I'm putting the switch in, or the uh, crystal in, right side up. You don't have to, it's non-polarized. But this is an OCD project. Does this clock have a temperature mode? I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't say anything about that. Switches! My favorite thing to solder. I love soldering switches. Because switches have the little holdy things and just stay right in the board. I love soldering switches. they have the little kinks in the legs and it makes them just stay there. They're, they have legs that are spread wide and they're a little kinky. So I love soldering switches. So we had, we had a little bit of inventory here. The solder bridge. But I think I got that sorted and it's just one of the resistors so it's no big deal. It's gonna be fine. It's a little ugly. There, it's a little less ugly now. Okay, we got the diodes in the middle and the buzzer, and I think that's it. So our buzzer has polarity, and the label has polarity, and the top of the thing has polarity. So they really want you to know the polarity on this. So that's in, and we'll give a little bend.
Okay, that's soldered quite beautifully. Okay, that's the whole bottom of the board. Everything's done. Everything looks good. The middle is done. The edge is done. All we got left is, it's really, it's all about LEDs at this point. We'll do the little ones in the middle. Now, here polarity is marked with the diode symbol and I think the arrow is the positive and the line is the negative. So the arrow is the anode and the line is a cathode. I think. Am I correct in my thinking? I'm going to ask the team while I take a minute and flux this, but I think arrow is anode, line is cathode. So a line is cathode, that's the shorter wire. Sparky says yes, so cool. I thought it was, which is why I started soldering the first one. Okay, so now it goes the other way. Okay, so short lead goes to the line because that's the cathode, which is the negative. And the last one of the simple LEDs, line on the left. Okay. All right, that's everything except the big displays. I think we're good there, look at that. That's looking really cool. I'm excited, we're getting close. Uh, all we gotta do is plug in the displays, solder those down, and plug in the microprocessor, which I'm not doing until everything else is done because I don't want to damage the microprocessor. So these go 
These things are always such a pain in the ass. But this one is easier than the last one of these I did. As far as LED modules go. There. Down. Let's bend that one off. And let's bend that one off and it stays. Beautifully done. Beautiful. Fuck. Look at that. That's, that's lovely. Okay, let's do it again. That side first, then up here, because I can get a fingernail in there and wiggle those around. This is surprisingly like picking a lock just as far as like, you've got pins that you have to get into alignment. Get in the holes. Oh my God. First one wasn't so bad, but the second one was a bit of a bitch. But we're in there now. It's going to be okay. That one high, that one low, and we're locked in place. Okay. You can see it, I can see it. Good. They're all straight and true going in. Oh, that's way easier. Okay. All right, so we're all set there. That was, that was way more easier.
Soldering clearly is the phase where you put the magic smoke into the electronics. Okay, got a thing stuck in there, see it? There, that'd be bad. All right, let's inspect our work. Everything looks good to me. Okay, and I don't, I don't see where Let's take it out of the holder. Clean our board off. <sighs> Thanks, so. All right, so let's look at the whole board. Now, it doesn't appear that we're missing anything except the uh, chip, which we can put on now. It's certainly time. Align our legs pretty decent and our notches at that end that's all in no legs peeking out yep, all of our legs are in so I don't see anything missing anywhere on the board Everything's down and in and good. So we flip it over. We're cool. And we know it wants between 7 and 12 volts. So I'm going to grab the power lead here. Plug this in. It goes in there, right? Yep. Okay, so our power lead is in. And set that aside. Okay, fire up our power supply. And I'm going to set this. This one's what, 7 to 12, so dial in 10 and I'm gonna grab a pair of test leads Plug our positive in, our negative in. We're good there. Okay, moment of truth. Everybody ready? Let's see what happens. Here we go. 10 volts. It's doing stuff! How cool is that? It works! It works! I'm so happy. Look at that. It's ticking away the moments that make up a dull day. 
That is so cool. I finally got one that worked. I don't know what the buttons do. Well, I'm going to get this set up with a power supply. Like, you know, a little wall wart or something, because it's very tolerant of different voltages. So I'm just going to find a DC wall wart. And I'm going to set it. And I'm going to have a real clock. That is super cool. I'm so jazzed about this, man. After the Tesla coil nightmare, it's nice to have one that fucking works. So, I made a clock. This is the... Let's see. DC 3 to 6... DC 3 to 6 volts. Um, no, it runs on 7 to 12. But the instructions say 3 to 6 volts. It also say it's 6 bits. It's not 6 bits. It's six bytes. I'm saying six bytes. And it's by EQ Kit, and God help you if you try to follow the instructions. I didn't. The instructions don't tell you how to build it anyway. The instructions tell you what the fucking buttons do, which is cool because that was the one part I couldn't figure out very easily. So cool. There you have it, guys. We made a clock together. That's so cool. I like this one best so far because it's got six digits. I like, I like the, I definitely like the extra digits. So thank you, everyone. I may 3D print a box for this big teddy. Um, I, I might laser cut some acrylic and make an enclosure for it. I don't know. I'm going to do something with it though. This is, this, you will see this in my shop on a shelf on display because I made a clock thing works. It's cool. Yeah. That is so neat. I know it's stupid. Like if you if you don't build these kits, if you've never done something like this, it's stupid. Once you've done it, you understand. It's different when they're your own. So yeah, this is super cool. I want to figure out what the J1 power lead does too. I'm curious about that. Huh. Well, thank you for hanging out with me. This is a long one, but it was worth it because the damn thing works. And that's super cool. Did I mention it works? I made a thing. Look at that. I made a thing. And if you make this kit, you can find the links to all the kits um, in uh, the if down below in the links. I don't put like 10,000 links below my videos. I don't want to be a link whore. There's one link that goes to my Amazon store. And in there is a whole section for Kits with Chris. And you can find this kit and all the other ones I do and stuff like that. They're all in the Kits with Chris section of the store. But if you build this, if you do this, let me know. Post a comment on this video. Post a link in the Discord. I want to see your video of your clock. You can, if you want to do a video of making the whole thing, I'll watch your video. If you just want to show me a video of, hey, it works, check this out, then post that and I will cheer you on because you are awesome. Because this is a relatively easy kit to build. There's some stuff to figure out. There's some puzzles to solve. I had a little difficulty with resistor color codes because I'm still learning that. And I had a little difficulty trying to tell the voltage regulator apart from the transistors because they look exactly the same and they're not. But it works. We figured it out. We did it together. We worked as a team and we made a thing. And it works. And how cool is that? So thank you for hanging out with me and making a thing. And we put it on the internet. And that's awesome. You guys are cool, and I will see all of you next time. So, as always, you guys have fun. See you.